this is a beautiful space to be in because it's sort of the turnaround and the cultivation of all of the other things that we've discussed and you know the primal um, archetypes and also um, you know the ways that we can reclaim our power and also the ways that we give it away and as we make all of that in awareness and bring it forward and then we can actually move into how that brings us to a place of passion because of course we each have um, a beautiful unique gift to offer this world and it's really hiding in the depths <laughs> underneath all of the things that um, maybe we haven't wanted to face in a long time and so now that we've been kind of excavating and diving in and creating safety in the body and exploring these different realms of being, we can now go into um, places of self-appreciation and actually acknowledging our worth and really being with um, how we see ourselves and recognizing our superpowers and our gifts. And so as we do this, we're just in this mode of expansion and it's kind of a harvest. You know, it's that place where we've gone through all of these steps and now we're sort of rising up to um, get the gifts and the benefits from sowing the seeds that we planted over our lifetime. You know, it's, it's a different kind of experience than getting a degree, for example, in an academic setting and sort of learning something from other people, because this is something that we cannot learn from anybody else. We all have a particular kind of mastery that only we can get and only we can know. And we do a pretty good job from hiding it from ourselves you know, and um, that's okay, but we don't have to do that anymore. You know, once we sort of shed all of the conditioning and all of the programs and all of the reasoning and all of the patterns and loops and the things that keep us within the tendencies of staying small. And as we build this capacity, we may start to notice inspiration bubbling up, you know, and it doesn't mean that we're never gonna experience doubt and relapses of guilt or whatever you may face. Um, it doesn't mean that that's not gonna come back. It means that we have a greater capacity to actually be with that part of ourselves and not let it run the show and actually allow ourselves to blossom and flourish even in the face of those things because they're there, we see them, but they're not in the forefront anymore. So as we dive into the path of passion, Let's just do a little grounding. Feel free to close your eyes. <clears throat> Remembering all of the journeying we've done thus far, accumulating the beautiful experiences that we've allowed ourselves to have in the depths of our own body and being. the innocence in our heart and the fire in our solar plexus, greeting those places. Allowing yourself to drop some roots down into the earth. Letting your breath deepen. <clears throat> Letting your body know and your mind know that it is safe to be who you are in the space that you exist. Allow yourself to have that space. And as we drop in and we tune in, we're gonna greet the intuition. And some people associate this as living in the gut because the gut brain is also a third brain in our body that is greatly influenced with the things that we intake. And that can be food, that can be external stimulus, thoughts. Everything is sort of 
digested in this gut brain. This is our capacity to move with our truth and to create from a place of the inspiration that we feel. So we're just gonna greet this place. And we're gonna make a vow with our intuition and with our truth. And as we do that, we may notice that an internal realm starts to develop similar to the other places that we've visited. But this time I'm sort of gonna let you create it yourself. Because this is your realm, this is your domain. So as you find yourself in the seat of your intuition and the land that is yours, just take a look around and see if this space feels spacious and open, if the paths seem clear, or if you find yourself in a dense sort of place where you get to clear some space. Keeping in mind that there is no judgment here. There's always cobwebs to clean up so that new ones can be made. There's always the capacity for great expansion One is not greater than the other. <laughs> Whatever is true for you in this space is true for you. What I invite you to remember is that you are not alone here. There is a guide, maybe more than one, You might have met this guide before. Maybe you've never met this guide before. As you deepen and familiarize yourself with this internal space, I want you to allow yourself to meet this guide. Find this guide walking towards you as you walk towards it. It may be a two-legged, it may be a four-legged, it may be a winged one. Likely it speaks a language that only you can understand. And I want you to feel the benevolence of this guide and recognize this being as an ally, as a guardian to your intuition. The one who holds you and reminds you how to get back on track of your truth, how to expel your doubts, and walks alongside you in all of the moments has infinite forgiveness and expansive inspiration with you here. So go ahead and allow yourself to exchange something with this being. It may be some words, it may be an item, or maybe a song. 
Just go ahead and allow yourself to make an exchange, remembering who you are in this space and remembering who <clears throat> this being is in this space. Knowing that you can call upon them anytime and that they're here for you. If this being has a name that it wishes to share with you, go ahead and ask that now. If there is no name, go ahead and inquire. How can I call upon you? Is there a certain noise I can make or a certain hand motion? What is it that can bring me into a space of invocation with you? And once you've made that connection and had an exchange, Go ahead and ask this guide if it would be willing to remind you when to trust your intuition, how to trust your intuition, fortifying the courage that it was required to walk forward in your truth without shrinking or doubting yourself. Remembering the gentleness that is inherent. And if you forget that, your guide is also willing to remind you of that as well. So go ahead and give gratitude. yourself to feel the support that is always here. And then allow yourself to recede from this space, walking the opposite direction from which you came to greet your guide. knowing that you will reconnect soon again. And find a nice place to take a seat. And whenever you're ready, close your eyes in that space and open your eyes in this space. Yeah, super powerful. <laughs> I really felt that one. I really dropped in with you there. Mm. Thank you for going on that journey with me. It's a beautiful thing to remember that we are infinitely supported and that always, 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 we can call upon our higher self and or our guides to remind us to allow this beautiful unfolding. Because as we initiate ourselves, we're going to hit a lot of walls. We're going to get all those obstacles and all those road roadblocks, and you can call them tests if you want to. They may come internally, they may come externally, but no matter. They are here to show us, to teach us, to check us. <laughs> and we greet that. We greet that with, with acceptance and allowance because we know that any 
internal or external part of us that's like, whoa, 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 wait a minute. It's just the part that's trying to keep us safe. And as we remember that, and as we remind ourselves of that, anything is possible because we're actually allowing ourselves to fully bloom and blossom at our own pace. There's no rush here. As long as you're in your truth, there's no way you can do it wrong. This is really just a practice of allowing yourself to be you. No matter where you are, no matter what's happening, no matter who's around or what they may think about it. Because the world needs you. It needs all of us. The reason that we came here is the reason that we're alive. And maybe we know what that is, and maybe we're just starting to remember again. Wherever you're at is totally great. We have infinite support for that. So I do recommend journaling about this. It's easy to dive into these internal visual realms and then they may leave quite quickly, similar to a dream. So it's great to make the practice of reflective writing. And as you write about this internal space and the guy that you met, um, also write about how you felt when you were in that space and what that space looked like for you, remembering that it may change every time because we are growing and expanding continuously. So it may have only been that way that it was that one time. <laughs> so uh, it was a unique experience. Maybe it's similar the next time you visit. I don't know. This is your internal realm. But I do recommend writing about it and also writing about what supports you in following your intuition and walking your path of truth. And also, in what moments do you find that it's not as easy to do that? Because if you can identify and locate the sort of trigger points that pull you out of that space with yourself, then you can more easily recalibrate and come back. And then as soon as it starts happening, oh yeah, there's that thing again. Here I am, in the center, grounded. Where's my truth? I'm in my intuition. I trust my intuition. I validate myself. I am my greatest authority. Yeah, so write about those things. And uh, I'd love to hear if anyone would like to share. It's, um, it's a powerful thing to dive into these internal realms. It's infinite for sure. And um, I hold space for, for each of you to really go into this um, with honor and respect and really allow, really allow the depths to inform you and to teach you and, you know, just celebrate yourself as you are in your truth, following your intuition. I hold you in that. 